Yo, what's going on? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. Tail wag Wednesday. At the end of the episode, don't forget to bring in your dogs. I'll yell at them through the magic of the internet. And we'll see if they respond. I'll get a good giggle out of it. Hopefully, we'll have a good time. But we also have a package here from Saucony. A lot of you guys have been asking me about this quite a bit. Uh, but I bought a couple of pairs of shoes. These are the first pairs of shoes that I bought in a very long time. I can't remember the last pair of shoes I bought. Might have been some Nike shoes. But it's been a while since I bought shoes. I've been trying to intentionally been trying to reach out to brands have them send me shoes so that way i can open lines of communication if i have a question about stuff if i want to know heel drop information you might not get from the websites um but my contact at saucony no longer works at saucony i think probably when they moved offices from boston to michigan that person didn't go over and my attempts at contacting somebody have gone on unread or maybe red. I think they've been red, but unresponded to. But we got the shoes anyway. Just had to wait for them to go on sale. But we'll get to that in a second. But first, let's say hi to everyone listening on the podcast on the audio only version. Hopefully, I was having a good run today. Absolutely beautiful weather here in Crystal Lake. Uh, I guess it's good, but you know, I had a really hard workout today. Sage and Sandy were very mean. They rode a workout of five times 1200s at 10K pace, really long recoveries, plenty of recovery, just 1200 is a long time to run at 10K pace in a workout. So I wasn't too happy about that, but the rest of the run was great. Weather was nice, not a lot of wind, temperatures are balmy. I ran in shorts and short sleeves. So it was good. So hopefully you're having good weather. And if you got intervals, hopefully they're either shorter, like 800 meters or longer at a mile. So that way the paces are a little bit more reasonable. You know what I mean? I just hope you have a good run today. That's all. And for everyone else watching this later, but not live, welcome to the number one place to find out, is this shoe heavier than last year's? I guess that could be a fun game for next week, but I guess it's something that we kind of play all the time. I've, I've been, I've had this scale for a while, but I've been enjoying weighing the shoes with you in real time. So you're going to get the chance to see, are these new shoes heavier than the old ones? And that's the number one place so you're going to have information for that. I'm surprised that there isn't like a website that does that already. Some sort of like web scraper bot that just is like, is it heavier than last year's? Maybe we'll make a little, a little app. Does anyone know how to make like little apps like that? Maybe we'll make a website of completely ridiculous shoe facts, right? Should we do that? You, it's kind of like the VDOT calculator. You know, you tell it your 5K pace and then you ask it for marathon and it tells you what it is. It's not even an app, it's just a calculator, right? You'll get to pick a shoe from a drop down box and it'll just say yes or no. Is it heavier than last year's? <laughs> I feel like I would enjoy that. That'd be really funny. No information, it, it won't tell you what the weights are. It'll just say yes, it's heavier or no, it's not. And that's it. And if you want to find out the information, you'll have to actually go Google search it yourself. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that would make people mad. But that's the kind of thing I, I kind of enjoy doing. I kind of enjoy making people mad like that. <laughs> All right, Vinny Bella Balacqua is here in the chat. And he says, lunch break with Co. Welcome, Vinny. Good to see you. Um, Calvin Wong is here. He did the six by six with the Edge Paris last night. And he says it might be the one. It's a good shoe at, it's a good shoe at threshold effort for me and faster. Do you like it at slower speeds though? Like a marathon piece? Either way, hopefully you enjoy it since you got the shoe. Um, you know who else did the six by six recently? Sorry, I dropped the lens cap. Um, I did the six by six recently, even though I have a coach and they say I do that workout way too much. They still let me do it for once in a while. So I did that workout last week, but also I think just today, Ben Johnson did it as well. You know what, when he does the six by six though, I think he's, I, I, I appreciate that he's keeping with the numbers, the six by six, but I feel like uh, at his paces, he should be doing a six by five or maybe a seven by five because he ran it at 540 per rep. 
I feel like if you're doing a six by six and you're running more than a mile in six minutes, you're doing too much. <laughs> Maybe it's a th it's hypothetical to me. I I've never run it faster than that before. Mm. Mark Peterson says there's a website like the one I'm talking about. I didn't know about this. It's a website there's, that just answers the question: Is it Christmas? Yes or no? <laughs> That's really funny. Um. I have to do a Google search every time I try to schedule a meeting with someone and they're in a different time zone. I have to say, what time is it in? And I don't even say the time zone. I say specifically the city. So it'll be like, not mountain time. Like what time is it in Flagstaff? You know, what time is it in Colorado Springs? I don't even know. I don't even know what time zone that is. What time is it in Las Vegas? I have to Google that because I don't know what time zone it is in either. And I don't know if it's the same website that I'm hitting every time or not, but I'm getting an answer. I think Google has its own answer the way they do it anyway. Um, but yeah. Jared Crano wants to know, uh, what's the rest between the six by six? It's a minute. It's a short, painfully short minute. And Rich Dyson says, I'm doing a mini taper for a half marathon this weekend on the way to London. Nine miles easy with eight by 20 second strides. Okay, there we go. Hmm. Mike Penner is here. He says, yo, what's going on, Mike? What's going on, Mike? Good to see you. And Hawaii Frank. I want to say Hawaii Frankie. Even though the Hawaii, the second I is an I, and then the and Frankie, it's an E. But there's an E at the end of Frank, so I want to say Hawaii Frankie. And I want to say that Hawaii Frankie is the dog that's in this picture. That's a good dog. But he says, hello from Bavaria, which is a little bit confusing from Hawaii Frankie, but I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Mm. Jim Rome says, dude, you might not like their workouts now, but I think you'll love the results. Yeah, I know. I, I kid. I like to complain. I enjoy complaining as most people do. Right. I think most people enjoy complaining. Um, but, let me check my microphone real quick. I think my microphone's doing okay. Um, but yeah, uh, 1,200 meters is, a lo is long enough for me to be like, oh, this is a lot. 1,200 meters is long enough that I'll run for a while and then I'll look at my watch to see how much is left and I've still got about four-tenths of a mile left. And then I'm like, oh, that's like, I don't know, 650 meters, 700 meters. I'm not sure, but it's long. That's, that's a problem. Sometimes they write 800 meter repeats for me at 5k pace. And I think I'd rather do that because that's over in less than three minutes. You know, 1200 meters, that took me like four and a half, more than almost five minutes. It's a lot longer, you know. So as, it's more time to, to have pain and suffering. You know, we talk about in, in law school, we talk about pain and suffering and how they're different. It's not the same word. There's the pain and then the suffering. Pain is the discomfort. Suffering is the knowledge that more discomfort is still to come. Um, so that's pain and suffering or that you're experiencing the knowledge, the awareness of the pain. So there's suffering in a 1200, you know. And that's, but you know, again, good thing to be aware of, good thing to work on, good practice, I guess, you know. Uh, Sega Dreamcast says, are you programming the workouts into the watch or are you doing it manually? I program it into the watch, but a lot of times, sometimes they're, um, I'll do it to go on manual press, um, from one section to another, depending on how they write the workout. So if it's like three or four miles, you know, warm up and then do the workout, then I'll just set it. So I, I hit the lap press button and then it goes to the next part of the workout. But other times I write it very specifically, like two mile warm up, then this, then I'll just have it click over automatically. So, but generally I run it from the watch. If I try to remember it all in my head, I'll forget parts. So like I, I was supposed to do this one 18 mile run with like the first half at one pace, the second half at another. And at some point in the second half, like eight by 30 second speed bursts. I completely forgot the speed burst because it wasn't, it was like pretty vague. It was just like, just do it at some point in the second half. And that kind of stuff I'm not good at. 
uh, remembering. So I always have to put it in the watch. Mm. Daniel Sharp says, Hi, Co. Super excited that both you and Flores are running London this year. I didn't know he was running London. He just ran Tokyo. Uh, he says, Are you two going to hook up for a shakeout on Saturday? I'm running on a ballot place after five years of applying. Nice, nice. Uh, I don't have anything planned, but I'll have to see if we can connect at some point. I didn't, I just found out now that he's going to be in London. Hmm. Kenneth Fav says, Just hop on a track. It's three laps. Uh, what's, I don't know what's worse, 1,200 meters on the road or 1,200 meters on the track. Three laps just feels like forever. I don't know. Two laps feels like a long time on the track for me. I don't know. Hmm. But maybe. The only problem with the track is there are tracks around here, but uh, I'd want to go on them during the school day, and I'm not really sure what the rules are about that like around here um and so the only track that i know of is over at a small college that's nearby it's not that nearby um so that takes about 40 minutes to get to driving that's a long time that adds a lot more to the workout Mm, Grant Reese says, he says, I'm choosing between the Takumi Sen 9, the Puma Duvi 8 2, and the Endorphin Speed 3 for intervals and workouts. Suggestions, sub three marathoners. Um, I'd probably go with the Takumi Sen 9 uh, for that because, like, uh, if it's a longer workout, I would just say run in your race shoes. And then for a shorter, faster workout, I, I think the Takumi Sen is the most aggressive of those. So, unless you're looking to use the DV 8 2 or the Endorphin Speed as like a. You know, I'm doing 18 miles at a little bit faster than easy. You know, that kind of like a long run with a little bit of speed, but not marathon speed. Then maybe those might make a little bit more sense. But I think that like for workouts, the Takumi Sen is going to be really fun. Mm. Back play uh, 54 says curious if super blast or just an upgraded nova blast or totally different experience favorite shoes are rebel v3 but want a little bit more cushion sometimes and Nova Blast threes were okay but felt chunky um they're they're a very different experience different foams different geometry uh different last ever pretty much everything's different similar ish uh outsole pattern and like the little trampoline thing in the on the bottom of it uh is mine here Yeah, so this area right here is kind of similar to it too. Um, but uh, if you want a little bit more cushion sometimes and you don't like the Nova Blast 3, I would take a look at like, well, probably the Rebel 4. It's probably going to be your shoe. Um, or the 1080 version 13. Mm, probably Rebel 4 because it's still pretty light. It's lighter than the 1080, I think. I think. Um, so those could be ones to look at. You know, mm. Mike Penner says, have you worn the whole Sace guy ensemble yet? Wear it to your daughter's basketball game. She's done with basketball, but she now has track. So maybe I'll wear it to a track meet. Oh, I should wear it to a track. People, are, uh, that'd be weird. That'd be super weird to wear it to a track meet. People think I'm an official or something, um, but I have worn it all together. Um, it looks super goofy. It looks very weird. I've worn them the pieces separately. Like the shirt looks great. I think I wore it for the tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon video. I wore the shorts yesterday. I just made a Puma Velocity 3 reel and I wore the shorts there. Um, and I wore the jacket for you guys on the live stream. But I wore the jacket and the joggers together on a run. And it was a lot. It was, it was a lot together. Um, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, all right. Daniel Burton says box time. You guys are ready to move the show along today. I like this. Okay. Big box. Where's my knife? Uh, do I have the knife up here? Where, where, did, where does it go? We don't really need the knife. I can get it open without it. Look at this. Look at no. What's going on here? Um, 
there's some note about like recycling and stuff, but this is an interesting, is this so you don't have to use tape to send it? Or I don't even know, but they still package it with tape. Maybe someone that knows about boxes could tell me about that. All right, I got two pairs of shoes today. These were ones I bought myself. Let's take a look at this one first. Well, let's take a look at the shoes. We've got Endorphin Speed 4 and the Endorphin Pro 4. Let's take a look at the Speed. Here it is. Check it out. Hmm, looks a lot more streamlined. It looks Kinvara like kind of, if you ask me. And then this is giving me uh, old school Saucony ride vibes. So I like the retroness of it. Remember that kind of like fish design that the Kinvaras used to have? So I'm, I'm liking this. And I think this is all power run PB in this shoe. Does anyone, you guys probably know. I don't have a spec sheet because Saucony is not talking to me for some reason but i think that's what it is and then i think we got a very big nylon plate in here you can even see it it's like a guarantee right on the box uh, and then the, again there's wings on the side which indicate that the nylon plate is more for stabilizing the foam than it is for propulsion um, the upper looks pretty puffy like this tongue seems puffy nice and stretchy Big holes. If you've got that weird hole phobia thing, this is going to set you off. Look at that. That's kind of gross, like a bunch of pores, but smells pretty good. It smells a little bit like midsole foam, like plastic foam, but it's very breathable. But this tongue is, there's a lot of tongue here. It's gusseted. Uh, not too much padding in the back, but a little bit of structure back here. Should we weigh it? All right. I do think a fun game is going to be, does it weigh more than last year? But maybe we'll play a little mini game of it. We'll try it out. Okay. I moved the scale, so I'm going to zero it again. All right. What do you guys think? Well, while this is getting set up, I'll get my Endorphin Speed 3. The Speed 3 feels lighter. This is coming in at 8.5 ounces. Pretty good. There's a lot of shoe here. A lot of shoe. It really flares out a lot here in the heel. I'm actually a little bit concerned about that. Um, and here's the Endorphin Speed 3. Is it lighter than last year or no? While you guys are thinking about it, all right. You guys had some good guesses um, for the shoe. Just all you got to guess is more or less. Yes or no. Is it is it heavier than last year? Is the Endorphin Speed 4 heavier than last year? Just guess yes or no. And then while while you guys are answering, I'll, I'll do this in, uh, in grams. 240 grams. It's amazing how little that means to me. Like you would think that like by now I've kind of got a sense of the grams but i don't but um is it heavier than last year all of you guys who answer i know some of you guys were very precise and just said what you think it is but the question was is it heavier than last year so technically you're wrong mark everyone who said yes you are correct lee wilson you're correct um alex hermanson said medium doesn't even make sense <laughs> Uh, Nicholas Holland said it's not heavier than last year. Nicholas, you are wrong. Um, Daniel Estrella did not answer the question correctly. Runner Will said, yes, it's heavier than last year. You're, I think you're the first one that said yes. Because this is 8.0 ounces and this is 8.5 ounces. But there's just so much more foam this year. Like, like in the heel, like all this, these like uh, fish scaly things, this part right here. It's just adding a lot more foam. Very different. I got two right. Get a right and a left so we can like line them up better. This is, you know, I'm trying to like figure out like, where is it different? It's, it's a lot wider. 
the actual footprint isn't that much wider, but it bulges out by these little fish scaly or these like dinosaur scale things. And then it's mo it's wider through the um, arch. And it just seems like a taller shoe as well. So, yeah. Adam, is that, I'm like, is this the right? No, this is the Endorphin Speed 4 and the Speed 3. So I, I'm hoping that even if it's heavier, I hope I just enjoy it more than I enjoyed the Speed 3. I have a, my, so looking at this, holding it, I think it's going to be uh, more stable, more accessible, more boring a little bit. That's that's my guess. Hopefully I'm very wrong. Some of you have been telling me about it already and tell me you're really enjoying it. So I want to enjoy it. I want to love it. I don't like, I don't, the in Speed 3 had a nice tongue. This one, it's kind of like they pulled it off an old ride ISO. Remember how much of a sweat sponge those were? Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Danny Gugliotta reminding me, did you take the paper out of the insole of the inside? Yes, I did. I remembered to take it out this time. No paper in here. <laughs> I have forgotten that before, but never, like I've always realized that at some point. You know. Mm. Mm. Patrick Ododina says, it looks more like fish scales. What do we think about these? I feel like these are like reptile scales. I keep saying fish scales, but I feel like they're reptile scales. I mean, they're scal... We can just call them scallops either way. But I feel like they they stick out quite a bit, like three-dimensionally. You know, you're not thinking three-dimensionally, Marty. Um, I feel like they kind of bulge out and then come back in. So the footprint in the back isn't that different than the last year. But overall, there's much more flare out. And that to me means it's going to be very stout. It's not going to move around a lot. But yeah, fish gills. Daniel Burton says it looks like a lizard. Calvin says gills. Mm. All right. Um, Eric's like enough talk. Indobro quattro por favor. Okay, we'll get we'll get moving. See, I don't, you know I I talked the other day about needing a producer, but you guys are like my producers. I was thinking about like ways I could kind of professionalize the show a little bit more the other day. We'll get to that in a second. This box is a lot fancier. It says Endorphin Pro over here. Can you guys see? Yeah, you guys can see it now. It's got a little sock thing on the side. Who I do not like this color. Uh, I have only myself to blame because I picked it. It's darker than I thought it would be. I thought it would be like a like a lighter navy. This is a dark color, but this is the Endorphin Pro 4. Maybe I can like this. This is the is this blue? It looks purple to me. This is the kind of color that to me looks very, very purple. Um but yeah, again we've got the um what are we gonna say we're gonna call these? Gills. It's got the gills on the side. Uh I think there's little touches of power run HG in this shoe. That's what I thought I remembered reading, but it only says Power Run PB on it. Uh, and the front seems to be Power Run PB. Um, similar, oh, I, I love it. This in the black outsole looks great. The contrast on the black and white compared to the gray and the endorphin speed. Um, and you can see the Speed Roll Technology carbon fiber plate through here. I feel like this is going to be more stout, more. Even more, I mean, the Endorphin Pro 3 was the most accessible carbon plated shoe, except for maybe the SC Elite 3. You know what I mean? I just, I really hope that these scallops don't do what I think they're, that they're going to do to the shoe's performance. But all right, let's get the, and let's get the Endorphin Elite out while we're here. Okay, here we go. I don't, I, I got nervous for a second there. I don't know why. All right, weighing the shoe. I think you guys are gonna be surprised. Um, wait, what is going on here with this tongue? Have you seen this? Have you seen, what is this? It's a knit tongue, which normally, great, right? Um, but 
this knit tongue here, let's get focus on the tongue. It folds up. I don't know if you're supposed to have this in the folded up position, but in the folded up position, it says Saucony and you fold it down and it's got the Saucony River logo in there. What is happening with this shoe? I don't like that at all. I guess like if you're sensitive up there, you can flip it to have more tongue. For those of you who want more tongue, more tongue. Um, but it's weird. Oh boy. Anyway, okay. What do we think? What are we thinking weight wise? <laughs> Back play 54 is the extra tongue is why it's so heavy. <laughs> Uh, and Cosmic Pineapple Michael says, you fold it down to the Olympic trials to hide your brand. Runtime, he thinks it's 7.8 in ounces. You're really close. Um, it was actually 7.6 ounces. And I know I got to that quickly, and I know a lot of you guys are guessing. But um, the real question is, I remember you got to answer yes or no. Is it heavier than last year? And while we're doing that, we'll uh, do the grams on this one too. 7.6 ounces for the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4, 216 grams. Hmm, all right. Sega Dreamcan says, yes, it's heavier than last year. Lee Wilson says, yes. Daniel Burton says, no. The correct answer is, yes, it's heavier than last year. Last year was 208 grams, 7.3 ounces. It gained 0.3 ounces of weight. I think you're right. You're right. I think this extra tongue might be it. Because remember, last year's tongue had whole speed holes inside. So there not only wasn't there extra tongue, there was holes cut out. But this tongue is short. And I could see that some people might have had this cause a little bit of chafing right at the top of the ankle joint. So this would solve that. But they went to a full knit tongue, which normally I like. But I also felt like this is one of the best fitting uppers I'd like pretty much ever experienced. This has a lot to live up to. I'm not I'm looking at it now. It looks like the similar material. This is hexagonal, where this one was more ovals. But it's kind of got that same like shimmeriness underneath. The mermaid sparkle, remember? I think I prefer the design of three. Three's design is so good. Or someone said these were a Klingon somethings. Yeah, they look kind of like Klingon stuff to me. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing it too. Andrew Cho says the midsole on the Pro 4 is meatier. Sin like sinewy? Chewy? I don't know. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this. Oh boy. Um... Calvin says the upper looks more built up in the four. It does. It feels like there's a lot more upper here. Um, yeah. Although the material itself doesn't seem that different. It may be the same material, but just the tongue area and then here, this area in this collar, I feel like they've done all, well, let me move this comment. I feel like this area all in the collar here, there's just a lot more, again, it's reminding me of the ride ISO. There's just a lot more stuff up here and then unfinished edges. I don't know if you could see that, but like it just, it doesn't, it's just an edge. Yeah, focus, 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 focus. Yeah, just an unfinished edge. You see raw foam here. That's very reminiscent of the ride ISO. I don't know. I, I, I want to, I really want to love this shoe, but I'm, I have small concerns. I think ultimately I'll probably be fine. All right, let's weigh the Endorphin Elite. Zachary Hymas, Zach James says, I experienced the exact same lace tongue rub, gross, on my Pro 3s, and I used a Band-Aid during my half to help. See, this, Zach, Zach Hymas, this is for you. All right. Oh, look at this. Did I not know this? Here's a question. Is the Endorphin Elite heavier than the Endorphin Pro 3? Mine isn't. 208 ounces, 208 grams, 7.3 ounces, same weight. These are the same weight. I guess there's more foam here. And I think there's more foam here, but it's heavier. 
Oh boy. Yeah, a lot of you guys got it right. Well, uh, everyone got it wrong. Yes, everyone that said yes and no. Because it was the same. I guess I should give that as an option. That's my fault. That's a trick question. Mm. Steve Blackadar says, I think visually the speed and the Pro 4 are too close together. It should be immediately obvious, which is, which, and to me, it's not. Uh, I go back and forth on that with like the training companions and the racing shoes. Like the Vaporfly 4% and the Zoom Fly 1 looked identical. You have to look carefully at the lacing system to be able to tell. Or if you saw creasing on the Zoom X, then that, that was the way you could tell. Um, the Endorphin Pro 2s and the Endorphin Speed 2s looked almost identical. Do I have those? I have the pro. I don't think I have the speeds anymore. But wasn't there like a badging thing with the colors here? That's the only way you could tell, right? Kind of like the endorphin speed, or the or the meta speed sky in Paris have like the black and yellow. Wasn't that the same thing that was going on with the endorphin pro twos? I can't remember. And then was that with the endorphin pro ones as well? So I guess they've always been similar. And I'm not saying just because other sim ones have been very similar in the past that you're not right, Steve. But I'm uh, I'm comfortable with it. And let's get the other one back out. There's too many shoes up here. Um, wait, so this is a 8.5 and this is 7.3. So now uh, 1.2 ounces is different. 7.6, I'm sorry. 7.6. Last year's was 7.3. 7.6 and 8.5. So 0.9 ounces difference. I think the size of the... I, I always want to call it a partridge, but it's the Saucony River. The river logo is different. On the bottom, they look very similar. And then in the heels, I do think they look quite similar because of the gills or whatever we're calling those scallops. And they got a little tail notch as well. There are a lot of similarities. It's true. And they both say Power Run PB right on the shoe at the front. I, you can't see that on their speed because of the cameras, but they both do say it. A lot of similarities. A lot of similarities between these two shoes. Mm. Shannon says, I need people to know I paid double than what others paid for the twin training companion. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's not the only reason. I think it's just nice to be able to spot shoes, you know? Um, so Calvin says, I guess the move is to wait for the Pro 3 to go on sale. Has it ever been on sale? I've always been remarkably like impressed with the fact that it was 225. I feel like it should have been a 250 shoe, but I'm not going to say that too loud, I guess. Um, I, I thought I saw it on sale for 180 before, but I'm, I don't know. Like now that the four is out, like, I don't think they'll be making more threes, which has always struck me as interesting, right? Because like with iPhones, they keep making the last year's version when the new one still exists, but they make it for cheaper because now they can move more at that, um, with volume and volume pricing and all that kind of stuff. Right. So like, why don't they keep making the last year's while the this year's exists, you know? I guess it makes for some of the other shoes pricing to be weird then, because then if you get an Endorphin Pro 3 at the price of an Endorphin Speed 4, why would you do that? And I just think that the shoe pricing is already very confusing to a lot most running customers. It is to me, so I don't know. Mm. Oh, Mike Panthers says, compare the breathability. Yes. Oh, this is very breathable. This material. I want to say it smells like a grape, but I think that's because the color is confusing me. It doesn't smell like grape in here at all. Kind of smells like a basketball. This overlay smells like rubber. Very breathable. 
Oh, I think this is more breathe. I think the Endorphin Pro 3 is more breathable. Maybe it's because there's this giant overlay that's blocking my breathing. The shoe also smells a little funny. It's, I've run a lot in this shoe. I ran Chicago Marathon in the shoe. I put a lot of miles in Endor Endorphin Pro 3. It's smelly. I think, I think it's equally breathable. It's just this overlay is going to make it a little bit less breathable because it's covering up more of the shoe. And then the tongue, it's knit, but it's not going to be as breathable as a tongue that has three giant holes cut into it in the last year's version. Good. I'm glad I'm glad we, we did that. I don't want to forget. Um, Terry says, the Speed 2 was a wonderful shoe. It was. I, I really enjoyed that one. Eric says, uh, Speed 2 was amazing. RIP. Yeah, that was good. Really good. General Stealth says, uh, and look at this. Look at this little character. He's got his picture. General Stealth says, I think shoe technology has come on, come on that far in the last few years that there's a fine line now between all versions and only the Elite Runner would be able to tell much difference in performance. I think that shoes have come a very, very long way. And I think that if you put on like a, uh, it's, I think the best example of this is when Hoka re-released the Clifton One because everyone was like, oh, these Cliftons are good, but they're no Clifton One. And so Hoka was like, hold my beer. We dug up the old plans and sent into the factory and they're making us the Hoka Clifton Ones again. And then they sold them. And then people were like, I don't like these. Something's wrong with them. And they're like, no, we gave you the exact same shoe. And people were like, these aren't, there's something different. I think that they shipped with a different insole. And, people, and Hoka was like, nope. And so I think you would notice how different the, the shoes are. It's just that they're all really good. It's a great time to be a runner. It's something that I say all the time. I'm not disagreeing with you all that much, General Stealth. But I, I think that like shoes are really great right now. We're very lucky. Um, and I do think that there are very noticeable differences between shoes um, if you're trying a wide variety of shoes, right? So like I ran the Velocity Night Show 3. They are firmer than I like. But for some people that like a firmer workhorse style shoe, that's a really great option. It's a great option for people that like squishy shoes too, like me. But it's definitely not exactly intended for me. Um, and so like what I think that we're seeing more of is like, it's confusing for customers because people are like, why is there a Cumulus and a Nova Blast? Why is there an Endorphin Pro 3 and an Endorphin Elite? I don't understand. You know, like there's a lot of shoes that serve the same purpose, but they're built for different customers. And I think that's what's great too. And that's where I notice the biggest difference in shoes. Like a Brooks Ghost is completely different than a Rubble 4. But they're trying to do the exact same thing, you know? They're just doing it a different way because they're doing it for a different runner. And I think that's where it doesn't, you don't have to be an elite runner to know that. But like Endorphin Pro 3 versus Endorphin Pro 4, I'm not an elite runner. Maybe I just have sensitive feet. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to tell a difference and be able to say, ooh, this Endorphin Pro 4 is great. But I don't always say that with a shoe, that the next one is better. So, mm. Mm. Adam says, I still have a virgin speed too. Do you really? You're saving it? Hmm. Mm. Nokun says, how do you compare the tongue on the speeds with the tongue on the Nova Blast 4? Let's get it out. So the Nova Blast 4 has basically like a really thin piece of like foam as the tongue it's very thin and it's got a little notch up top it comes up tall but remember the nova blast one that tongue came up like this high like an inch high it was goofy goofy weird i think it was that way on the two as well it took them a while to get that to normal the endorphin speed force tongue is also notched it actually doesn't come up quite as high as the the nova blast fours but it's it's airy but there's padding at the top it's just seems I don't know. It might be more breathable than the Nova Blast 4s, but there's just something about it that seems... Maybe it's the holes that are in here that are throwing me off. Uh, it's just... What was it, Eric, that called it the endorphin... Pro, 
the endorphin pour for. But it just seems frumpy. I don't know. I don't know. It just, yeah, I think the Nova Bless 4 needs a lot of help here. But this is a tongue that didn't bother me. I don't know. Mm. Mike Penner says, have you ever ran in one of each shoe? No, I think that's silly. I know people do that. Um, I don't think that gives you any useful information. Mm. Oh, Matt Byer says, the Pro 3, the Orphan Pro 3 was on sale at Thanksgiving for 25% off. You got his for 168. That's a steal. That's a great price. Uh, Richard Wilson got his, it says it went briefly on sale last year and he got his for 160, just time for sale. It must've been the same sale. And Leroy says, I got my Pro 3 on sale more than a year ago. Yeah. See, I feel like the time for sales on the Pro 3 is probably over. I think they've, what's left is what's left, I guess. And I'm, maybe they're not in a hurry to move the inventory because I think people will buy it. I don't know. Mm. Come on, I was mentioned Brooks. He says it's obligatory, but I thought Brooks has been making the same shoe for 10 years. They kind of have, they have their customers and they know what their customers like and their customers really like what Brooks makes. They're updating. I, I did. I, I, have I told you about the ghost 16 yet? It's better. I think the improvements to the glycerin are far more substantial than, but they both upgraded to DNA law version three this, this year or anyway, either way, this is the first year I've experienced DNA law version three in the ghost. I am pretty sure it's the first year that it's in the glycerin. These are much more runnable shoes for me. I can actually run in them. I might even say that I like them, but they're very much Brooks ghosts. And for that, for that customer, you know, Brian Albright opens a live stream and Kofusi smelling shoes again. That's just how it goes, you know. <laughs> uh, Daniel Burton says, what are you using those shoes for fast runs or long, slow runs? The Endorphin Speed 4, I would probably use for a run that was going to have like strides in them, something shorter, faster. I might even use them for a workout. That's kind of like where the Endorphin Speed has typically been. Uh, I've also used the Endorphin Speed for a long, run that's faster than easy but not quite marathon pace i did an F F a 30 mile fkt in the endorphin speed three so like that's kind of a, a way to use it when you want something a little bit more comfortable than a marathon shoe maybe you're going to be on feet for a long time i feel like the endorphin speed has been a really solid option for marathon runners who are concerned about being on feet for a long time and maybe don't want carbon and want a little bit more comfort than they want raw performance so that's kind of how people would use it. But I think it lines up as a, a training companion, like you race in the pro and then you do workouts in the speed. Or um, you can do daily. A lot of people have been using the endorphin speed as a daily trainer, which I I don't know how Saucony feels about that. I think that probably would annoy them, but that's how a lot of people are using it as a daily trainer. Kenneth says the grape color is ugly. Yeah, I don't, I don't love it. Um, I'm hoping I'll like it like out on the roads, you know, maybe in the contrast of black pavement, yellow paint, it'll, it'll, it'll work maybe, but so far I'm underwhelmed with this color. I didn't, I didn't like the black and red one. And I think those are the only two color options that were available when I bought these. Mm. Daft for Zach, 7103 says, have you ever thrown up because of running? If yes, is that preventable anyway, besides not running too much? Uh, I think I haven't thrown up running since like maybe like high school. Um, I dry heave all the time. And for me, I think it's a, um, I think it's a response to running hard. I think it's a way for like my diaphragm is trying to suck more air in and it's just spasming to pull the lungs to open up more and just get more air into the lungs i think that's pretty much it if you're vomiting a lot though 
um, like actually throwing up, a lot of the times it's, uh, can be because of your stomach contents. Again, it's mostly driven by like running hard efforts and sometimes people run till they puke. But a lot of times for like marathon racing and stuff that comes from like, you know, you're just trying to get in more nutrition, you're struggling late in the race, so you're just guzzling stuff down in the hopes that it'll help you feel a little bit better. And then it might be too much for your stomach and then you end up throwing it up, you know. Daniel Australia says, hey, Co, what makes you not pick up the Pro 3 for your A races? I think I got run an, an A race in the Pro 3. It just hasn't come up. Um, I think I much would prefer the Endorphin Elite, though, if I was going to race in a Saucony shoe. I just love what this shoe offers. So, um, yeah. But this one, I feel like um, it's very bouncy and it's a lot of fun. Um, but it's kind of like in the middle of the road, you know. Um it's very, very good. But like, I like the, the like, for example, when I pick the Metaspeed Sky Plus over it to do some A races, like at Grandma's, like, the, I like it. It's a, that shoe's a little bit more aggressive than this one is. So that's, I, that's why it's not a bad shoe. I, I think it's probably one of my most recommended shoes. Like if you if you were to count up like all the times I like recommend a race shoe at the end of a video, it's probably my highest recommended shoe. Yeah, Andrew Cho says the Pro Four does have dual density midsole, power on PB and HG. I don't, I'm, where's the HG though? Is it an insert? I, I see and I can feel like a little nubbin of it at the back here. It's hard. It's blown out on this camera, but there's like a little bit of like tan coloring. See that foam in the heel. And then up front, it all looks like beaded Piba. So it must be an insert like inside or inside the shoe. Mm. All right, let me scroll down and catch up to you guys. Yeah, Kevin says the HG is the top layer and it pokes out the heel. That's what I thought. And I thought that this that's what this paint color would signify, but then I when I looked at it, I'm like, that's not power on HG. So then I got confused. Uh US runner says, beginner runner here. Why don't folks prefer Nova Blast, Rebel Speed, etc. for marathon since paces are much slower relative five to and ten K? Uh because their shoes are a little bit heavier than race shoes uh for marathons. And so that's a shoe that's in between the speeds of what I would use a Nova Blast and Rebel and Speed for um, and what I would run a 5K, 10K in. So um, the carbon fiber plate is a little bit, gives you a little bit more aggressiveness, a little bit more pop. The racing foams are a little bit more responsive. So they compress and decompress just a little bit faster. Uh, and the, the shoe, like the shoe geometries put you in a place where you're going to be turning over a little bit faster and are designed specifically for running at marathon efforts. Whereas the Nova Blasts are more for just everyday stuff. And so kind of three different sets of tools if you want to think about it that way. And then, although that being said, though, before I move on, uh, some people do run marathons in the Noblas, the Rebels, and the Speed. So there's a lot of people that do that. So it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, you know. Um, yeah. And then Eric says that there's nine millimeters, if you're the real Slim Shady, of Power Run HG. Is there really? There's nine millimeters? It must be cradled inside all this Power Run PB. So, that's interesting. Why did they do it that way? So it must be the top layer above the plate and then the bottom and it cups the power run HG. Hmm. All right. I'm 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 intrigued. I'm really intrigued. Hmm. Mm. Let's see. All right. Grant Reese says, Deviate Nitro 2 or Deviate Elite Nitro 2? I think without any other context, I'll say Nitro 2. 
So if you have more, like more specifically what you want to use it for, you know, but like, uh, yeah, I'll go with the Deviate Nitro 2. The Elite Nitro 2 is a good shoe. I think it needs a lot more foam to be a shoe that I can recommend to a lot of people. I feel like you have to be a pretty efficient runner to be running to run in the Deviate Elite Nitro 2. But the Deviate Nitro 2, a lot of people can run in, you know. Mm. Oh, Eric says it's just a joke. It's not nine millimeters <laughs> power on HD. Why did you say that? <laughs> he says you're being too literal. Uh, not sure if they've really suspects on the number of millimeters of HG. Okay. See, I don't. Yeah. All right. See, not, I'm just gonna have to wear them, running them myself. Uh, Sega Dreamcast says, oh, okay. Uh, Nitro 2 popping up at Burlington Coat Factory for $40. $40? Keep your eyes peeled next time you're out. $40 for a Nitro 2. Guys, pick it up. Go get it. I think there's a Burlington Coat Factory near me. I want to go see if I can find some. Hmm, interesting. And Adam says, were Fiona and Dakota wearing the DV8 Nitro Elite 3? Yes. I don't know that from... I didn't speak to Fiona, but Dakota said that Dakota was, and she said that Fiona was. And so, so I feel like Dakota is a pretty reliable source. But yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, someone said, "Don't forget Wagtail Wednesday." Should we get to it? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I'll put these shoes away. You go get your dogs. If they're not already in here, call your dogs in here. I really would love. I really would one day like to try to get a howl going. Um, you guys ever watch Zootopia? I had a Zootopia moment today because I don't know how, but I got all the parents at the bus stops talking about moles and voles. And I never even knew what a vole was until I saw the movie Zootopia, you know? Um, but we got in a very long talk. Apparently the entire neighborhood is overrun with voles. I think we got some in our backyard. I thought maybe mice were making some holes back there, but one of my neighbors said it's it's a vole. He's got many. No, it's not a vole. He thought it was a vole because they were small, but they're actually moles, and he moles are smaller than he thought they would be. But he said vole a bunch of times, and my kids were like mole. And he said no vole, and he's Portuguese, so we thought maybe he was just saying it wrong. Anyway, okay. <laughs> right. um, Steve Blackadar says, "All right, dog time. No, I gotta get out of here." Cool. That's why we do it at the end. Um, see you tomorrow, Steve. And Graham Haynes, he's got Gideon. Gideon. Is Gideon a good boy? Gideon, come here. Gideon. Ooh. Can we get a howl? I, I don't know if we can do a howl. That would be funny. If your dog starts howling during this, send me a clip of that. I'll, I'll stitch it together. We'll get everyone's dogs howling. <laughs> but Gideon, Gideon is a good boy. Um, all right. Um, CJ Brucey says got Moby standing by again for a good boy Moby come here boy come here boy Moby Moby <laughs> good boy good boy Moby are you being a good boy good 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 uh, Pepper's in here Pepper the snake S Pepper's in here um, you know what do you know who has snakes um, Sandy Cheeks Pole Walter she has snakes she has a bunch of them i think anyway levi is here andrew scott brought levi levi come here good boy come here ho, 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 ho. levi 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 good boy um louis says canelo doesn't speak but that's okay canelo good boy canelo and um marty b says can i get a good girl for riley riley good girl good girl riley's a good girl good good dog good dog and Philip Bourne says, uh, Lars is here. Lars, good boy. Lars, looks like you just came back from a run. Did you come back from a run? Probably not, but in the picture you did. Good boy. And uh, Paul Paul Iams says, Shadow and Sunny. Shadow, Sunny. <laughs> come here. Shadow, Shadow. Good boy. Sunny, good boy. Or maybe good girl. Either way, good dogs, good dogs. Uh, all right. Andrea Lebo says, Wayne's always watching me. Wayne's world. Wayne's world. Party time. Excellent. Good dog, Wayne. Good dog, Wayne. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think, I think, 
I, I think uh i think that's a good be a good one for today everybody thanks everyone for playing along good dogs oh <laughs> all right adam says uh instead of trivia next week let's do an nca double a type bracket shoes or races okay we'll do some brackets we'll do some brackets we'll shoe uh kofuzi run club favorite shoe we'll do a bracket breakdown we are going to play a game tomorrow though um i got i have time to put it together but we'll do that okay so we'll have a game tomorrow and we'll have one next week next week's going to be a short week i'm traveling um i'll tell you more about it tomorrow all right i think that's a good place to leave it for today guys hopefully you had fun uh what's tomorrow thursday oh tomorrow's video will be an on cloud eclipse update and then i'll see you again for the live stream and we'll play a game so should be fun uh, until i see you then be safe out there everybody thanks <laughs>